other day. Yeah, so I you do. The, uh, guy. I made a I made a uh, channel for Jerry. Okay. I don't have one for you yet because I don't have enough videos. But the once it reaches critical mass. Right. Uh, I sent Jerry his channel. I don't want to see that. I said, okay. I said I didn't realize you were a narcissist. Said, no, I just want to check it out. <laughs> Uh, have you heard of a Canadian filmmaker called Adam Egoyan? Uh, no. Okay, I will say he's the, probably one of the greatest filmmakers of the last uh, wow. 20 years, 25 years. I would recommend a movie called, uh, now he's maybe not as good as he was, uh -huh. uh, but I would recommend a movie called The Sweet Hereafter. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. It's one of the greatest movies of the uh, 80s, I think, I would say. Real talent. When you look at this guy's stuff, you go, this, now you're in, Yeah, you know. what, what is the plot of that again? Well, it's from a book by an American writer called Russell Banks. Yeah. About a bus crash. Oh, yeah. I don't want to spoil it for the you. The bus goes off the ledge and it goes inside yeah, yeah. the lake. Yeah. 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 But it's not really about that. It's about these people. Right. This old man that's uh, come to the town to talk to these yeah, people. Yeah, I'm familiar about with that. Kid. Yeah. That's a great movie. He's a great filmmaker. And he's done a couple other ones that are really good too, but that's that's really the one. Uh, yeah. Sweet Hereafter, recommended highly. I thought a very good American film was *The Squid and the Whale*. Yeah. You see it? Of course. Yeah. Bill no, Bomba. Uh, one of his best. No, I'm sorry. That's, that's no. Jeff Daniels. Um, I was Jeff thinking, Daniels. I was yeah. Of Life Aquatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bill Murray, you I think lost in translation. Right. It was yeah. a very good movie. For good right. times, make it <laughs> sanatory time. That's right. That was a very good movie. No, Squid in the Whale was great. The, that's where I got the use of the word Philistine. Philistine. And uh, yeah, Jeff, Jesse Eisenberg's for, I think, one of his breakout roles. Yeah, he played Mark Zuckerberg, right? Yeah. No, no, that was The Social Network. But yeah, he did yeah, he, play Mark Zuckerberg. He, played, played, played. Yeah. he just plays this kind of condescending elitist son of a literary professor. Yeah. And there's this great scene where he fakes playing uh, this Pink Floyd song for a concert and tries to pass it off as something he composed. And just the, <laughs> the, the masquerade is just so flimsy. Yeah. The veneer of intellectualism is, is painful. But uh, yeah. yeah, but it's very real. It kind of resonated with a whole generation of people that were bright young children, you know? They yeah. wanted to impress people. And... Now, did, you, uh, did you read the, uh, the Hornet books? No, I didn't read a single one. Great. Recommend it highly. That's Lars who? Or yeah, the guy, um, I forget his last name, he died. Yeah. And uh, so there'll be no more books, but that was great. And the movie, the American version? Yeah. Uh, is really good. David Fincher. Yeah. Who also yeah. did the, the Social Network and others. Right. Do you think all, the books, it. all the books are, are of equal um, skill? Equal yeah, I think the last one is the best, but uh, they're great. This character he created, this woman, mm -hmm. was an amazing character. Like a post-feminist heroine. Right. And uh, but the main theme of all the books is revenge. Revenge. And how sweet and satisfying it is to exact your revenge and get justice. And the woman is, uh, you know, somebody who's, um, yeah. because being a woman and things like that happened to her. She exacts revenge, and she's a very formidable adversary. Very versed in computers and super versed. Yeah. So I mean, it's really good. I really recommend it highly. The dragon, the the, the Hornet books. Yeah, I think. The girl, I, the girl who whatever. That's the titles. I think I did see the first movie, but I was so inebriated. Well, I hope you didn't see the Swedish version because that's terrible. The no, Swedes have already made th all three books movies. They're all awful. Should avoid them. That's the, yeah. David Fincher did the first one, and hopefully he'll do two more. Because it was really good. One of the best performances of the last few years by Rooney Mara. Yeah, I saw the Swedish version. It's terrible. It's awful. It's just like a uh, yeah, B movie. Was, uh... But Rooney Mara was phenomenal in yeah. the title role, and uh, Daniel Craig was good too. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, but Rooney Mara was a sensational. You're always amazed by these kinds of performances because then you see interviews with her and she's not very interesting. But she gets in front of the camera and uh, it's amazing. You know what film I saw recently that has this 
I just believe it's virtuosic Byzantine story arc is The Talented Mr. Ripley, which I thought was Oh, oh great. Yeah. It's a great movie. He died. Yeah. He did three films and died. He did The English Patient. Right. Talented Mr. Ripley is a great movie. And Matt Damon showed that his, a, his best performances so that, are of that of a sociopath, of, a, yeah. of the anti-hero. That, that role as a sociopath was so well done. Yeah, I think it's arguably the best portrayal of a sociopath to date on film. It's, it's got to be up there. Yeah. It's got to be up there. That was, that was really good. And I think, honestly, of all of Philip Seymour Hoffman's roles, Freddy in that film was probably my favorite. Yeah, I can't remember that. Uh, he plays uh, Dickie Greenleaf's best friend, yeah. Jude Law's best friend. <laughs> He dies, right? He, blood, he gets bludgeoned to death by Matt Damon, yeah, with a, with a, a bust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Isn't is Gwyneth Paltrow in it? Yeah, she is. Yeah. And that scene at the very end when she goes, I know it was you. I know it was you. <laughs> oh. There's also this ornate ceremony. I think it's Southern Italy or something. You remember that big scene with the ceremony with these candles and everything? Yeah. It was really yeah. well done. It was this powerful, like, primal experience of this. Yeah. Well, uh, this guy was a real visionary. Yeah, Anthony Mangella. He only did three movies. Yeah. Well, it has, it has movies. Matt Damon singing an act, a surprisingly poignant version of My Funny Valentine. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember But that. it's just so heartbreaking because he, the sentiment is real. Yeah. You know, it's not air sense. He yeah. wants to connect, but these emotions yeah. are just, oh, they're just, it's just simulacrum. Yeah. And just that resonated with me because I've asked myself, some of the questions about the authenticity of my emotions. Well, everybody does. Yeah, everybody does. But yeah, in that movie, I think, I think didn't Matt Damon get to sleep with Donald Paltrow? I think I think I've he heard had, that. He had yeah. sex with her, right? Which yeah. is really creepy because he's yeah. in American movies. You would never see that. Well, yeah. They would never let the bad guy, you know, be thwarted somehow. But in this, he wasn't thwarted. Right. <laughs> That's creepy. Yeah, I remember. I was just stunned by that performance. Uh, it's really slimy. <laughs> Indeed. Have you seen a movie called, I'm going to give you these couple movies, Roger and Me? Yeah, absolutely. Very I good love movie. Roger and Me. Um, I'm not sure if Jesse Eisenberg was in that. I don't know who the young guy was in that. Might have been him. It's yeah. one of his first roles, maybe not. Yeah, it's been a long time since. That's a, that's a really good cult movie. Yeah. Roger and almost Me. Is, almost as cult as Harold and Maude. Yeah, going back. It's one of my uh, probably top five movies. Now, well, why do you think that resonates with you? Well, I just think it, it tells us that that horizontal energy isn't isn't bound by age. That it teaches you literally that you know, there's no reason why you can't connect with someone at a romantic level who's. 70 years, no, 60 years your senior. Yeah. And uh, no no other film has said that. Yeah. And the way it satirizes the kind of, the, you know, social mores of the time with the Vietnam War and um, that priest that has that just utterly hilarious close-up on how he thinks the, the, uh, the, the wrinkled flesh commingling with his supple buttocks. Yeah. It's just hilarious to me, and, and the whole dark humor of it, I yeah. think, is just some of the best. It's funny how filmmaking, uh, in a lot of ways, has gone backwards. Nobody does writing like that anymore. Right. It's gone yeah, backwards. Humorous. In the 60s... Uh... There was this droll humor that was ubiquitous. Yeah. And now it's... Yeah, we had Strange Love, you had, you know, all these films that, and, you know, didn't spell it out for you. you know? Yeah. Didn't try didn't to spell it out how to laugh and feel. Yeah. But I'll tell you... Uh, Cat Stevens soundtrack. I mean, you can't, you can't deny the power of that. The cat, the cat was now Yusuf Islam. Yeah, was taking right. an interesting journey. Right. <laughs> One of the best movies of the '60s, about the '60s. In fact, my favorite movie. In fact, there are two. Is the Brisky Point? Mm -hmm. Seen it? The Brisky Point. Antonioni. No, I haven't was seen one it. of the greatest filmmakers. In the short history of film so far, he's one of the greatest. Wow. And he did two, the two best films about the 60s. He did Zabriskie Point, which takes place in California, and then Blow Up, it takes place in England. Yeah. you got to see him. Well, that's got to be on your list. You haven't seen either one? I know of Blow Up, but I have Two best films about the 60s. Yeah. 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 It's a great scene in Blow Up, the guy, the protagonist, 
photographer. He stumbles into a concert in London. This is when the rockin' 60s are happening, right, in London. Uh -huh. And there's on stage the Yardbirds, Jeff Beck and Jimmy Page, playing on stage together wow. in the Yardbirds. Yeah. And he stumbles into it. So, yeah. that's a great piece of the movie, dates the movie. Yeah. Sounds, uh, sounds The 60s, yeah, so I would recommend those highly. Yeah. Uh, you think, do you think uh, 2001 was the oh, great. most powerful film of the, of the 20th century, let alone the 60s? Well, no, I want to say it the could be. I mean, it's a, it's a great film. Kubrick is arguably the greatest American filmmaker. Yeah. Because he did so many films that were different, and yet they were really good, whereas I was saying Scorsese and Coppola, for instance, mm -hmm. all their popular movies, The Presidator, were violent. Right. Kubrick did all kinds of different movies. Right. Lolita, right. Strange Love, even 2001. His, even his weaker, even he, even his arguably weaker films like uh, Eyes Wide Shut. Well, that was terrible. Been criticized. Well, it's been criticized as yeah, being long-winded and boring. Yeah, it was but terrible. But it sticks with you. Really? It stays with I don't you. know. I thought it was uh, Nicole Kidman's monologue about the sailor, about yeah. sex and love. I mean, these things. I don't know. I thought I, I, I thought it was weak. It was his weaker. It's, it's probably his weakest, but yeah, it was bad. I didn't like it at all. <laughs> Sorry to say, I once got punched up by a cubic friend for saying that. Yeah. He says he can't do wrong. He's like Beethoven. I said, come on. Yeah. That was the right of the end of his life. He was really. That was really about him and his wife. Right. You know, but but that orgy scene, for instance, that's it was BS. Because you know, lots of people go to orgies and stuff, and they have a lot of fun. And he depicted, he depicted the orgy as this really like nihilistic, kind of a sad experience. It's not true. It could be, but not necessarily. A lot of people, you know, love going to orgies and having a lot of fun. So that was just... Dionysus would disapprove. What's that? Dionysus would disapprove. Dionysus would disapprove. Well, yeah. Dionysus. Who is I gotta get those guys out. <laughs>